Hello everybody, it's Kara from Wild Book Garden and today I'm here with part two of my November wrap-up. I will link part one down below as well as content warnings, links, everything else that I mention. And the first book I'm going to talk about is Daisies and Devotions by Josie S. Kilpack. This is the second book in the Mayf Mayfield Family series but it's actually the third I read because I've read one out of order. Um, and this is a series of proper romance companion books. Um, we are following Marianne and what is his name? Timothy in this one. Uh, Timothy is the one in the Mayfield family um, and he has been in London during the season trying to secure a wealthy bride um, but he has been like really trying to find somebody that he does genuinely like and get along with and that he thinks would make him happy and he could make happy so he's like he, he really doesn't have any other options but marrying rich but he's trying not to be mercenary about it as much as possible and Marianne is kind of one of the I guess front runners for Timothy. Um, he likes talking to her, he gets along with her pretty well, and she's extremely wealthy. So even though she's not um, as beautiful and charming as some of the other ladies, he is kind of like preparing to propose to her when his uncle um, gives him this like marriage plan basically where um, Timothy gets a lot of money and property and land um, in exchange for marrying for love. And Timothy is like, this is great, that's what I wanted to do anyway, now I can because I have financial ability to. Um, and so he kind of breaks things off with Marianne and they end up just becoming friends, um, even though Marianne still maybe likes him more than he does her. And Timothy has like this whole long list of like the perfect attributes uh, of a woman, of the woman that he loves. And Marianne is like, this is ridiculous, like you're being completely unreasonable, you're never gonna find this. And so the two of them end up playing matchmaker for each other, where Marianne is trying to prove to Timothy that like this perfect woman doesn't exist and Timothy is trying to find a suitor for Marianne. But then a woman who does fit everything on Timothy's list comes to town and so of course that uh, causes a lot of conflict because Timothy's like this is perfect I found the woman of my dreams but maybe that's not who he wants anymore um, and I loved this like what a plot twist because this is my favorite book in the series so far and it's friends to lovers which I don't like um, but it does have the matchmaker trope which is one of my favorites um, but I just loved this so much I really enjoyed Timothy and Marianne as characters um, I feel like they have believable flaws but like they still they're still very likable and even though Timothy does some like kind of dumb things or he's kind of frustrating it's like you understand why he does these things and he also does seem to be a very genuinely good person like the fact that when he was basically being forced to marry for money he was kind of going about it in the kindest way he could um so I really liked our main characters I really loved the female friendship and the way that was talked about here um I actually shared a quote on Instagram about that because it is so rare like I've read a lot of like historical set books that involve this kind of London season setting and it is so rare that we get like an explicit reference to the fact that like women like these women should be thinking of each other as friends and not competition and that even though society is trying to make them compete against each other it doesn't have to be that way um so I loved that I really really loved the romance between these two and like again even though I'm not a big friends to lovers fan and I'm also not big on one character developing feelings like long before the other person. Um, I still really loved the way the romance was done. Um, one of the like only negatives for me is I still cannot stand Uncle Elliot. Um, we still get like a few chapters about him here and I think his marriage campaign is stupid and offensive. <laughs> I understand that it's like the premise for the series so like I just want to stop hearing about it honestly because um, if I don't think about it then it's fine but like they keep trying to like explain why this is a good idea and I'm like no. Um, but anyway, I love this book and I gave Daisies and Devotion 4.5 stars. Next, I finished The Book of Hope by Jane Goodall and Douglas Abrams with Gail Hudson, A Survival Guide for Trying Times. Um, and I have to show you Under the Dust Jacket because I just think that it's gorgeous. Um, it's also the design on the back you can see. But this is a nonfiction book um, that is compiled from a bunch of interviews that Douglas Abrams did with Jane Goodall over the course of a few years. They started shortly before the pandemic started. Um, and this is exactly what it says. It's like, how do you have hope when there is so much suffering in the world, when it seems like we're doing so many things wrong? Um, yeah, like the, the, the quote on the back is probably the question I am asked more often than any other is, do you honestly believe there is hope for our world, for the future of our children and grandchildren? And I am able to answer truthfully, yes. Um, I think that really beautifully encapsulates the like project of this book. And I think Jane Goodall is a great like person to talk about these things because of how like her unique 
experiences and like the activism work that she is currently involved in, um, how those things relate to hope. And I absolutely loved this. Um, this was a book that I very much needed. I think a lot of us need this. Um, she talks a lot about the environment and um, doing good for other people and but also for animals. Um, this covers like a wide range of topics, but I feel like the way it was organized was really well done. It was very well thought through. It's kind of guided by the questions that Douglas Abrams asked Jane Goodall, but like overall it's like split between like four main things, like four main reasons that Jane Goodall has hope. And um, yeah, so she shares like specific examples. This is another book that I think is very approachable nonfiction. And um, I do feel like this was really well balanced between the different topics and between how much we heard about like these, um, both of these people's like po personal lives and everything. Um, I just love Jane Goodall and I admire her so much. And um, this is a very, very hopeful book. And I think it's hopeful in the most important way and the best way. Um, and one of the things that they talk about a lot in this book is that hope does not mean ignoring problems. Hope means doing something about them, knowing that there are still, that there is still good and that we have to keep doing that good. And like, honestly, giving up is kind of the easy way out, you know? And I feel like this book does a really wonderful job of showing that. Um, I also really loved some of the connections that Jane Goodall makes between like different issues and showing that they're not so different at all. Um, like showing the interconnectedness of different like movements and the importance of different kinds of conservation and activism. Um, like one example that comes to mind is she's talking about um, obviously saving chimpanzees. That's one of the things that she's, that's been like her life's work. Um, and one of the things that is a danger for them is being killed for bushmeat. And so Jane Goodall uses that to talk about how like the welfare and safety of animals and humans is so connected. Because if you want to save the chimps, then you also need to save the people in these villages who don't have access to other food supplies, um, like food deserts and poverty and things like that. So um, I just feel like it was really thoughtful. The only thing I do want to mention is like you know, Jane Goodall is a much older woman, so there are some like kind of outdated language that she uses around, um, for example, things like disability. So I do want to, you know, people just to be aware of that. But overall, I thought this was absolutely wonderful, and I gave the Book of Hope five stars. Next, I finished Agnes Gray by Anne Bronte. Um, this is actually a reread for me. I read this earlier this year for a live show, and this was for a different live show. Um, this was for our Past at Classics book club. I will link that live show down below, um, and. Yeah, I once again really enjoyed this. This is very short. It's only like just over 200 pages. Um, so I feel like it's a good beginner's classic, especially because I think Anne Bronte is a much more approachable style of writing from this time period than we often get. Um, we're following our main title character, Agnes Grey, and two different situations that she has as a governess. Um, and that's really like the, the overarching like structure of the book. Like it's not an overly complicated like setup or plot. Um, so a lot of it is very character focused, very kind of slice of life in a way. Um, a lot of this book talks about the class position of a governess and how uncomfortable and unpleasant that was. Um, it also touches on some other issues like animal cruelty. And one of the things that I mentioned the first time I reviewed this book that really stri strikes me about this story is like, it really shows like how you really cannot force people to care about others if they don't want to, you know? Um, and I, yeah, just makes me think a lot about the ongoing pandemic. Um, but I really enjoyed this. I know that this is not nearly as well thought of as The Tenet of Wildfell Hall, and I do think that I like The Tenet of Wildfell Hall better, um, but I also really enjoyed Agnes Grey. I personally found Agnes a likable main character. I know some people found her too much of a goody-goody. I find that kind of frustrating when people say that about female characters in classics, because I feel like that often comes from the expectation that a woman has to have a very particular kind of strength in order to be strong. Um, but I really liked her. I found some parts of this book like weirdly relatable. <laughs> um, and I also really, really loved the romance subplot. It is a very minor subplot, so I don't want to get people's hopes up too much. Um, this is a book that I really think your expectations have a big impact on how you get along with it. I feel like I was really well prepared the first time I read this book, so I kind of took it on its own terms and I really enjoyed it. But like I said, it is very character focused. There's not a lot that happens. The romance is a very small subplot. And um, it's not it's not going to be Tenant of Wildfell Hall. But if you go into it knowing that, I do think it was really well done. Um, I liked the themes. I also really love the character of Nancy, who is a tenant um, on the land of one of the families that Agnes works for. Like, I love their friendship and I feel like it felt surprisingly equal, even though they are from different classes. And I feel like that's kind of unusual for classics. Um, 
and like just Nancy felt like a real character you know not just like the poor person who's there to you know like add some add some spice to the life of the like more wealthy or more upper class characters. And I also really liked the way this book handled some of the themes, um, as I kind of already talked about. So yeah, I personally really liked this. Um, I gave Agnes Grey four stars. Next, I finished Rosemarked by Livia Blackburn. Um, this is the first book in a fantasy duology. And uh, this was a recommendation from Bethany, a beautifully bookish Bethany. And she was right, because I loved this. Um, I feel like this is a really underhyped series. Like I never hear people talk about this, but I loved this first book. Um, so we are following two main characters. We are following Ziva, who is a healer. We're following another character, Danaeus. Um, and they are, they're both part of groups that are being like occupied or colonized by this other power. Um, but Ziva's group is kind of trying to like placate them, like almost like an appeasement type thing, um, which means that Danaeus and his group of people like really look down on them. They're like, how could you like go along with the oppressors and everything? So they have a lot of like conflict towards each other in addition towards this like bigger empire. And Ziva ends up getting sick with a rose plague and she does recover, but there are a couple of different ways you can recover. One is that you're, you're fine forever, like you're immune to the plague and um, and you're not going to get sick or die from it. And then the other way is it's kind of like dormant, like you're still very contagious and you'll die within a few years, but it won't happen for a while. And unfortunately, Ziva is the second kind. Um, so her, she knows her days are numbered and she's really isolated from her community, obviously, because she's very contagious. And Danaeus has also caught the Rose Plague, um, but he has fully recovered. And so the two of them end up getting like paired up to go on this mission together to try and bring down the empire um, or to kind of like infiltrate and you know, like kind of figure out how they can bring down this empire and there's also a lot of like internal conflict because Ziva as a healer is really struggling with the kinds of things that she's being asked to do for the greater good and the choices that she is making for herself of what to do for the greater good um, and Danaeus is trying to get vengeance but because of the way some things have to work with their plan um, it's it's not that simple and like I said, I loved this. I thought the political elements were really well thought out, um, like the like these different like clashing groups and like the themes of like colonization and empire. I thought that was really well done. Um, I really loved both Ziva and Danaeus as main characters and I loved the external and the internal conflicts. Like I just found those very, very compelling. Um, I found the story very engaging. I also really loved their dynamic. Um, I feel like this book has given me like a new, very specific romantic trope that I love <laughs> that I can't say for spoiler reasons but I loved it. It like it made for such good drama but like drama for very good reasons and just I really enjoyed it. Um, I thought this was really well done. I gave Rosemark 4.5 stars. Next I finished Show Us Who You Are by Elle McNichol. Um, this is a kind of contemporary sci-fi book um, because it is mostly like our world but there are certain kinds of technology that are much more advanced um, specifically with the creation of like holograms and AI. Um, and our main character is named Cora um, and she ends up becoming best friends with a boy named Adrian um, and his father is like the creator of this kind of like hologram AI technology that is like supposed to help people like they use it for other things but like one of the big things it's supposed to do they say is like help people who are grieving because they can like the family members or friends can like um, have people's consciousness kind of like replicated or saved after their death and um, so this book deals a lot with grief and um, with like the ethics of AI, also with ableism and eugenics, and I thought this was really really fantastic. This was not at all the story I thought it was going to be. Like I, I thought I knew where it was going and then it did some things I absolutely did not expect. Um, I was so engaged with this book. I love the way that Elle McNichol writes characters. Adrian has ADHD and Cora is autistic, um, as Elle McNichol is also autistic. And um, I love the way we see their friendship develop. I loved both of them as characters um, and I felt for them so much. And the way that this book talks about grief just really, really, really got to me. Um, I thought it was so well done. And I feel like every time I talk about a book that like made me cry, <laughs> you guys are probably watching this like, yeah, Kara, we know. Uh, Cause I'm obviously like a book crier. It's not like unusual for that to happen, but it is kind of unusual for me to have such a physical reaction to a book that I like cry so hard that my ribs ache. Uh, Cause that's what happened with this one. Like just the way that this book talks about grief and deals with it is just like, it really got to me. Um, I loved this. As I said, I loved the friendship. Um, I do think that some of the plot elements around the climax um, were could have been done like a little more smoothly. I didn't completely like love that. 
Um, but overall, I thought this was fantastic and I gave Show Us Who You Are 4.5 stars. And finally, the last book I'm going to talk about today is Sweetheart Braves by Pamela Sanderson. This is the third book in the Crooked Rock romance series. Um, Pamela Sanderson is a Karuk author and um, yeah, this is the third book. We are following our main characters Tommy and Elizabeth, um, who we've definitely met Tommy before and I don't remember if we've met Elizabeth before. I don't think we have actually. Um, so Tommy uh, is one of the people who works at this urban Indian center and he is really going through a lot right now. He is really struggling to stay sober, like he's working really hard at that, um, while at the same time one of his, is it his cousin, I think, who is unsuccess unsuccessfully rehabbing in his spare room, um, which is obviously very, very difficult for him. And then things aren't going so smoothly with some things at work as well with this Crooked Rock Urban Indian Center, um, as we've seen throughout the other books. And then um, our heroine, Elizabeth Lewis, um, she ends up, like she's from a different city, and Elizabeth ends up coming to the city with her grandmother um, to try and right a family wrong. And that ends up being a lot more complicated than they expect and so her and Tommy um, end up spending a lot of time together and working together on this. And this is like a, one of those romance books for me where I didn't really care about the romance piece but I loved everything else so much that I still gave this four stars. I really enjoyed this. Um, I do think that you really have to read the series in order though because the like overarching plot stuff you really need to read chronologically. Um, but yeah, it's like I thought Tommy was a really well-written, interesting character. I do think Elizabeth wasn't as well-developed, but I do really love her bond with her grandmother. I love the way that this series really highlights caring for elders and how important that is. Um, I do enjoy like a lot of the humor in these books. I like the way this book talks about history and um, like who has control over, you know, memorabilia and sacred objects. Um, this book talks about repatriation and that was really interesting as well. And I also am super invested in this like overarching story of like, is the Urban Indian Center going to be able to do the things that they've been trying to do and they keep getting blocked from doing? Like, I'm so invested. <laughs> I'm so invested in this center, like way more than this like romance. I realized I didn't say anything about specifically why this romance didn't work for me. Honestly, it just felt really fast and really flat. Like I don't feel like there were believable reasons for why Elizabeth and Tommy got so close so quickly and cared about each other so much. Um, like it just didn't feel very well developed to me. But in terms of the romance, I am really excited for the fourth book because that is going to be two characters that we've been following throughout the series. We get chapters from them once in a while and their romance has been a long time coming and I actually really like that we get to see little snippets of that. I find that very interesting. Um, I know some reviewers like feel like they detract from the other romance, which I can understand, but I personally like that one better. Um, so anyway, I am excited to continue and I gave Sweetheart Braves four stars. Okay, everybody, so that was the second group of books I read in November. Please comment down below and let me know if you have read any of these, what you thought of them, or if you're going to pick them up. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you soon with another video and I hope you love the next book you read. Bye!